I'm Steve Holliday and I'm chair of the anatomy and radiology department and I'm an anatomist here. The skeleton we're working on is that of a large cat called a Sumatran tiger. It uh, became available at the veterinary college and often animals like this here are, um, if the owner doesn't want them back for burial or whatever, they're incinerated. And a skeleton like this has incredible teaching value. A Sumatran tiger being a cat is very similar to other cats, including house cats in its anatomy. And its size, so much larger than a house cat, is, is a big benefit to us teaching cat anatomy. Features on this animal that are specific to cats we can use to show, and that will include holes like I'm putting this paintbrush through here. This hole is called supracondylar foramen. An artery and nerve passes through that in life and they're important in limb injuries in cats. If we saw that was fractured on an x-ray, the veterinarian would want to pinch toes down here to see if the nerve was still working and examine blood supply to the lower limb. It's a lot easier for me to show that hole on a cat this size than it is on a house cat, but it has the same relevance on the house cat. So it has huge advantage for us for teaching simply because it's bigger. My name is um, Bob Gogol. I'm an uh, associate professor in the Department of Anatomy and Radiology. I'm also a veterinarian. And um, I was one of the project leaders on the construction of the skeleton. The Sumatran tiger is one of nine subspecies of tigers. What's unique about this particular tiger is it's actually the smallest tiger in the, in the tiger family. It's located in the uh, country of Sumatra, which is in Indonesia. It's an island country. And it was speculated about 6,000 6, to 16,000 years ago, uh, these tigers were separated from the main tiger population. Um, that being the smallest, average size of the males run about eight feet in length, anywhere from 250 to 300 pounds. And the females are about seven feet in length and run about 200 pounds. Currently, according to the World Wildlife Association, there's about 300 in, in the wild and somewhere less than 100 in captivity. From a conservation standpoint, not only from an education standpoint, but this skeleton has a huge conservation component to it because a tiger now is classified in the critically endangered species. So we have a, not only a great educational com uh, component, but we also have a very cherished skeleton that we hope you know, when it's completed, we'll find a home here in the college and be cherished. So the, the skeleton now is obviously um, cleaner than it once was. When the animal died, it, it was a beautiful animal with his skin on it and so forth. Uh, all of that had to be removed. All the muscle was removed. Uh, there are different ways to do that. We chose to uh, put it in a large pot and gently boil it for about six to eight hours. And then the meat falls off the bones and the bones then are not like they look now either. They're kind of a gray color, gray brown. They've got quite a bit of oil in them, so we had to soak them in a solvent to extract that oil. Otherwise, they'll, they'll turn yellow and they'll get sticky and dust will catch on them and settle on the skeleton. And we, we don't want that. So after extracting the oils with a solvent, we bleach them white. Some people like to use Clorox for that, but it's not a good way to go. It's too rough on the bones, will make them kind of chalky. Uh, so we use a gentler bleach, hydrogen peroxide, three to five percent. Turn the skeleton white like this, and after it dries, it's ready to be put together. Being a modeler who does a lot of structural models, I thought this would be kind of a really interesting experience. I think the first thing you have to learn when you're working on a skeleton is patience. We started with the, the vertebra, and we started you know, with the atlas and the axis and worked our way down into the thoracic limb. And I think we were, we had to first bend the bar, the aluminum bar here, which I guess you can see. And, and Steve and I laid out the vertebrae to see what, how long we wanted, you know, how long the cat was going to be to also figure out the platform that I built. It's a three-dimensional structure, so you have to look at alignment when you're putting it together. And I think we were about maybe three or four vertebrae into it. We realized we had actually torqued the vertebrae, so we had to take it all apart which is a lesson in patience. That's part of the business. And basically reassemble it and start back through. You can see all these are actually pinned. And if you took a x-ray 
a radiograph of this particular skull, and you would, you would be amazed at how many pins actually are keeping. And Steve is very skillfully covering up all the nail heads that we put together. So this was first, okay, and then we did the ribs. Once this was done, then we started on the thoracic limb. This went pretty easily until we got to the carpus region. This is very tedious. <laughs> I would say the, the digits are, were really challenging for us as well because uh, you really can't pin these very well. You actually have to glue them. And the, the last component of what we have left is really putting the tail on the tiger. This portion here, this uh, kind of the light brownish color is a, a different uh, tissue, a different structure on the cat. It's, it's not bone, or most of it's not bone. There is some bone down the middle of it, but most of it's cartilage. I mentioned that we prepared the skeleton by gently boiling it for about eight hours. If we did that with the sternum, we would lose it. It would totally disappear uh, being cartilage. So we had to remove that by hand from the cat on the necropsy table, dissect most of the muscle off of that, air dry it, and then put it in a colony of carrion beetles that will consume the rest of the muscle off. So now it's a clean sternum. And if you look at human skeletons, they look pretty much the same way as this, same color too. So once we get this together and we're, we're almost there, I uh, indicated to the dean when we started this that this is a 100-year investment. And uh, at older schools in Europe and elsewhere, there are skeletons around that have been there for 100 years. Large whale skeletons in museums, it'll last forever as long as it's um, reasonably cared for. And about all the care it requires is blowing dust off it now and then. Uh, it's here as long as we're here. In this case, we left the tail for last and have it ordered here so we'll drill a hole down the middle of each of those bones and string them through a wire and then connect it to the back of this cat and it'll have a tail and it's pretty much going to be a cat then when we get that last piece on. This was started, well it's been almost a year ago now and it's finishing at a good time because today is Friday <laughs> and Monday the veterinary students are here starting their dog cat anatomy course. And so we'll be able to use this starting Monday. So uh, we're finished just at the right time. <laughs>